Hi everyone, James Joshua Otto here and welcome to this new video where I'm going to be doing a walkthrough for you uh, for my track Storm Chaser. Um, I released this a couple of weeks ago and since then people have just been asking me bits and pieces about how I got certain sounds and uh, how I built certain parts of the track. Um, so I thought it would just be easiest to make a walkthrough video and just talk to you about uh, different parts of the structure that I'm um, particularly happy with or that I think work well or bits that people have specifically asked about. So uh, let's take a look at the logic file. I'm going to start off by looking at the synths here because they're really the background to the track uh, and they start the whole thing off. The top three here are just pads and you can see from the piano roll here that they're just pretty much sustained throughout. Uh, this ambient arpeggio isn't actually an arpeggio here, it's just a rhythmic bass line that just gives us a bit of movement at the start of the track. Um, these two here are the pluck sounds that you hear fading in at the start with a nice EQ filter sweep. And then we've also got uh, Terraform by Audio Imperia, which is a rhythmic loop instrument. Um, just to continue giving us a bit of movement here. Right, so I'll switch on all the other synth channels and let's have a listen to that opening with just the synths. Here we go. You can hear some of those sounds dipping in and out, and that's because they're side chained to the kick. Um, sorry, side chained to the kick, and that just helps the kick to punch through um, the mix a little bit more. We've uh, got this ES2 line here that comes in as well, and that's just got a nice pitch LFL on it, just to add a bit of colour. It's doubling the woodwinds as well, actually. Which you can't hear at the moment, obviously. Cool, so that's the synth parts for the opening section. As I said, they're really just the background here, just providing a nice canvas for everything else that's going on. So for that reason, they don't have too much melodic detail. Um, it's much more about texture. So if the synths are just the background, then let's have a listen to the foreground. In this track, like a lot of my work, it's the piano and the strings that really drive the music. So let's listen to them next. One of the things I decided to do with this track, which I don't always do, but something that really helps, was to write separate legato lines for the strings. Uh, it makes it a lot more realistic and it's one of those programming choices which goes a long way to adding realism um, and detail to the sound that you make. I'm just going to show you the strings in the piano roll because there's more going on there. Um, the piano is what it sounds like, so probably isn't as useful to see. Here we go. Some of the ostinato lines you can hear are running through an ostinato plugin within Albion 1, which is why the piano roll doesn't necessarily reflect what you can hear.
I've, uh, I've got tremolando cello panned hard right and hard left here as well with loads of reverb and that gives us a really nice wide shimmery sound, really helps with this build. So that's most of the detail of the opening. Um, we've also got the brass down here, which adds a lot of richness and weight, as well as the light percussion here, uh, just to add motion and a bit of punch with the kick. Um, and, and that pretty much summarises the opening. So let's move on to have a look at the second section, particularly the percussion, as that was something that I've had a number of questions about. And you can see here that there's more percussion in the climax section than anywhere else in the track. So I think we'll start off by listening through this last percussion build, partly because I just think it sounds cool in isolation. <laughs> but it should also give you more of an idea of how I've constructed this build and the beat and so on. So here it comes. So we start off really subtly with this ticking sound, one of the percussion loops from Terraform. And that just comes in with the strings as things start to swell slightly before the ride comes in just here. And that just helps us to keep building. I love adding a ride like this. It's a great way of leading up to a bigger build. I've got epic trailer hits here, a nice cheap sound set by Audio Imperio, only $5. Sounds particularly epic with loads of Valhalla reverb on it. Got some drums from Spitfire Audio's Darwin percussion set within Albion One. Mixed to sound quite far back to give us a lot of depth. The drum kit you can hear here is the Session LE kit from the uh, NI battery library. Really gives us an amazing beefy drum sound. Yeah. In fact, I might just play the drum kits on their own because as well as the battery kit that I just mentioned, I've also got a snare from the Logic Brooklyn kit with loads of reverb. Um, and that really adds to the epic feel. So um, yeah, just have a have a quick listen to this. So those big meaty drums are going a long way in helping to make the climax section just really epic and huge sounding. But it's not just the drums. The strings inevitably play a huge role in making this section really sore. So let's take a quick listen to them too. Keep an ear out for the uh, top legato line, which really glues the whole thing together. So there you go, that's the strings. Um, and I think that's probably enough um, for me to show you, actually. I, I, I don't think there's much more I could say. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, hopefully that's been useful, and hopefully um, it's been a useful yeah, sort of insight into some of the detail of this piece. Um, 
if there are other specifics um, that you want to hear um, then just yeah get in touch let me know um, and uh, if you've liked it then please do actually leave a like subscribe and all that good stuff leave a comment um, really helps that helps me out um, and uh, yeah I guess I'll see you next time thanks so much for watching um, yeah see you soon cheers <laughs>